Bitcoin maximalism, is it a failed ideology or are the Bitcoin maximalists onto something here? Well, when we talk about Bitcoin maximalism, what we're really talking about to an extent is tribalism, this kind of team sports mentality. And we have to question as a community, is this the kind of stuff that we want for the money of the future? Are these the kind of ideologies that we want for the money of the future? I know when it comes down to it, Bitcoin kind of doesn't really care about any of this stuff, but you do have new people who are getting interested in Bitcoin all the time, and you have community representatives who are out there presenting a one-sided narrative. Now, not everybody, obviously. Here I am making a video about Bitcoin maximalism and why I think it has some faults. But you have a lot of very prominent voices out there saying that Bitcoin above all else. And hey, look, a Bitcoin maximalist, basically the idea is that you believe Bitcoin is the best cryptocurrency in the world. I think a lot of people could get behind that. A lot of people go, yeah, Bitcoin, woo. The difference really comes in versus if you think Bitcoin is the best cryptocurrency in the world and the rest of the crypto economy can add a lot of value and innovation and do different cool things and there doesn't have to be a one coin to rule them all. And then there are the maximalists who think that yes, you have to have one coin to rule them all. Bitcoin will be the only coin. It's the only one worth spending time and effort on. It's the only one worth investing in. And it's the only one that they want to see progress. Everything else is a shit coin. Well, they make some exceptions for things like maybe Litecoin or Decred or Monero. Surprisingly, Grin seems to be the new baby of a lot of Bitcoin maximalists. But they argue that no matter what innovation you want, at some point, they can port that on to Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin can be everything for you. But I don't think Bitcoin needs to be everything. And I think that really is unnecessarily disparaging and dismissive of the wider crypto economy and the massive amount of innovation that we see happening there. Because it's really exciting when you start to look around the crypto economy, see things like DAGs being developed and the privacy technology being developed and on and on and on because it's super exciting, all of this new technology. And yes, there is innovation happening on Bitcoin, but there is a massive amount of innovation happening outside of Bitcoin. Now, the maximalists will argue that because of Metcalf's law, essentially the more people who use the network, the more valuable it is. They, in essence, see altcoins as just taking away value from the Bitcoin network, not that they're adding anything to the wider crypto economy because there is no crypto economy. It's just about Bitcoin. Now, as the process of making cryptocurrencies mainstream is a slow one, they also argue that companies would always choose the older and more stable networks rather than the new ones. I don't think that's accurate. I think there are a lot of companies out there who are willing to be a bit experimental, testing out pilots, for example, or they see use cases on other blockchains that Bitcoin doesn't offer yet. Just because it's the older and more stable one doesn't necessarily mean that all companies are going to choose that for their use cases. And there's a lot of examples in history of just because, well, we're the older and more stable bank or we're the older and more stable company. VHSs, CDs are never going to be a thing. People are going to use VHS forever because it's older and more stable. It's a, not a very good argument to make, I think, when it comes to defending Bitcoin, because there's a lot of other great ways you can defend Bitcoin without saying that just because it's been here the longest, everyone's got to choose it because of that. It's not very compelling, and a lot of companies literally aren't choosing that. A lot of companies are choosing to work with Ethereum, or they're looking at Hashgraph, or they're looking at EOS, or any other of the platforms or even for things like international transfers. They're not even looking at Bitcoin all the time. We have some great examples of Bitcoin being used for remittances, like with BitPesa, for example. But then you have Stellar Lumens doing remittances across the Pacific. So it's not all being monopolized by Bitcoin. Even if the Bitcoin maximalists would like it all to be monopolized by Bitcoin, the reality is the market is simply choosing something different. That's because the reality is, is that the crypto markets demand more than Bitcoin can provide. Consumers demand more from cryptocurrency. Consumers demand more from the related technologies, more than Bitcoin was ever designed to provide. Bitcoin, peer-to-peer, censorship-resistant, permissionless money. It's amazing. 
but there's a whole other world of crypto economy out there. To ignore all of that, again, is unnecessarily myopic. Charlie Lee recently came out on Twitter saying that some self-proclaimed Bitcoin maximalists are actually Bitcoin extremists. They think that all other coins are scams and will go to zero. Saying that maximalists think Bitcoin is and will reign the dominant cryptocurrency, but there is room for altcoins to exist and even do well. That's, I think, a viewpoint that a lot of people in the cryptocurrency community can get behind. Bitcoin can continue to be number one. Maybe at some point some other coin will overtake positions number one. That's not going to erase the importance of Bitcoin by any means. But they mostly see that Bitcoin will be the dominant cryptocurrency. But there's plenty of room for altcoins. There's plenty of room for innovation, for different communities to happen, for different ideas and use cases that Bitcoin simply can't provide. That arguing the opposite is basically an extremist position. And unfortunately, we do have a certain group of voices within the cryptocurrency community, particularly the Bitcoin community, who are very much Bitcoin or the highway. I think one of the big things we have to really face up to here is that the Bitcoin maximalist idea has largely been hijacked by Bitcoin extremists, promoting things like anarcho-capitalism and libertarianism, which both are very interesting and have a lot to offer in terms of different ways of thinking about how we can govern the world. But you're not going to get a lot of people on board with that. And if that if you're making that the dominant narrative of Bitcoin, it's going to turn people off. They'll go to another cryptocurrency or they'll stay out of cryptocurrencies altogether. Because Bitcoin's about code. And I know that people representing the community do have ideologies. We all do. But to try and make this association that Bitcoin is this just doesn't work. It's not useful in terms of trying to drive mass adoption, get everybody into cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin extremists have also been pushing the Bitcoin carnivore thing, which doesn't represent me by any means. I'm a vegan, but I'm not going to go out and start the Bitcoin vegan group because it's just more division. Money of the future, not the food of the past, guys. But still, it doesn't do anything good. It's just tribalism. That's what we're creating, new tribes, different tribes around Bitcoin, different tribes around different cryptocurrencies. These are the ideas of the past. This is the very thing that has got us into the situation where we are right now, continually dividing each other, continually saying, I'm right, you're wrong. I'm right, you're wrong. Bitcoin doesn't care about any of this stuff, guys. Bitcoin is code. Bitcoin's permissionless. Bitcoin's censorship resistant. Bitcoin doesn't care what you had for breakfast. Bitcoin doesn't care what your ideology is. So why are we making it about that? We shouldn't. It doesn't have anything to do with Bitcoin. It has to do with certain people's narratives of what they want Bitcoin to be. This kind of us versus them. We're the rational ones. You're the irrational ones. You know, just think about it. Because every time we've had this tribalist stuff, it's worked out so well for us in the past, hasn't it? History has gone very well with tribes versus tribes. No, we need to come together and believe in the code, believe in the idea of decentralized finance and what that can offer. Putting ideologies on top of it is recreating the worst of our society in a lot of ways. Take a minute too to think about the pros and the cons of Bitcoin. It's got some really big drawbacks that have been really getting a lot of attention. Proof of work has some real issues. Proof of stake is being explored by a lot of different cryptocurrency projects. Yes, proof of work is secure. Yes, we can do a lot of whataboutisms. What about the military industrial complex? What about the global banking infrastructure and all the energy they use? But the reality is, is that as Bitcoin continues to grow, the free market will either adapt to become very, very energy efficient, or it's going to continue to be a thorn in the side of Bitcoin. Then we have, of course, scaling issues. And yes, it's nice to see lightning coming around, but the reality is that right now Bitcoin doesn't scale very well. We can also look at lack of rich functionality in terms of things like privacy features, which we see being developed on other cryptocurrencies. And hey, it's awesome we're seeing side chains coming to Bitcoin. The network effect of Bitcoin is unbelievably big. Brand recognition, wow. That is worth serious money when it comes down to it. Because most people, if they know about any cryptocurrency at all, they're going to know about Bitcoin and nothing else. Bitcoin is sound money. Bitcoin remains permissionless. Bitcoin remains censorship resistant. They're putting satellites in space to beam the Bitcoin blockchain around the world. Lightning gets better all the time. 
So a lot of good things going on too. Atomic swaps continue to gain relevance. We see decentralized exchanges moving forward. But this whole one coin to rule them all narrative, it's not very compelling when it comes down to it. The whole idea behind the Bitcoin protocol was that it is driven by verifiable code, not an ideology. We are trying to decentralize the systems of power. Everybody wants the same thing. Let's not recreate the old structures with the future of money. Saying that only Bitcoin will ever be relevant will probably be chalked up right along with all those other failed predictions where people are saying the internet's never going to be a big thing or mobile phones are never going to be a big thing either. Bitcoin's awesome. Bitcoin will remain. Bitcoin will continue. But a lot of other crypto technology will also be very, very important. And every project in the cryptocurrency space is contributing in some way. Every failure is a lesson. Every scam is a lesson. Every success is a lesson. Every new technological implementation is a lesson. Litecoin, Ethereum, Steam, Zcash, all these different cryptocurrencies have brought something to the table in one way or another. The test of time will of course be the real test for Bitcoin. We see so many different things happening with privacy technology and DAG technology. Will Bitcoin be able to continue to innovate to stay at the front of the pack? Time will tell without a doubt. But the idea that as a crypto economy, we should put all of our eggs onto one basket, which of course would be Bitcoin. Bitcoin rocks, I understand why it's number one, but take off those rose tinted glasses for a moment. Understand what Bitcoin is, love it for its flaws, not for its fantasy. The odds do favor Bitcoin. Is it the most probable to succeed? Well, it's certainly got a lot pushing behind it. I think a lot of different cryptocurrencies are gonna succeed again. It's not one coin to rule them all. And the sad truth about Bitcoin maximalism is that it's not unique. Just look at the XRP guys, look at the Bitcoin Cash guys. Has your cryptocurrency become an expression of your identity? Is it like your sports team or your political party? If so, that's kind of sad. Because we're talking about code, we're talking about the money of the future. And again, this team sports mentality it just recreates the systems of the past. We're trying to create the systems of the future. And that is an ideology in of itself. I know you can't escape the idea of ideologies and biases and all these things. We are only humans after all. Can Bitcoin become the global reserve currency and replace all fiat and end the nation state like some Bitcoin maximalists might like to see? Could Bitcoin become the global reserve currency? Well, a lot has to happen between uh, now and that to happen. And it might not happen anytime soon. It would require a lot of external events like the collapse of the US dollar, for example, but possible, very, very possible. Or a host of cryptocurrencies could become the global reserve currencies. Again, let's expand our ideas. Why does it have to be one coin that becomes the global reserve currency? Maybe it'll be five coins. Will it replace all fiat currencies? Now that is a big ask without a doubt. We are counting on all governments and all central banks to fail. Can we end the nation state? Well, I'm actually a very big believer that one day nation states will end. And I know that's not a very popular idea, but I look at the curve of history and I think that at some point in the future, it just won't be a thing. We'll be so interconnected. And it's not to say that it has to be some dystopian, Illuminati, terrible thing. Like, no, we all live on the same floating ball in space. We should be working together. We should be more inclusive. The nation states, again, only divide us like so many different tribal narratives. Might not happen in our lifetimes. I'd be very surprised if it did. But just think in the year 3000, you think we're still going to have nation states then? You can let me know about it down below in the comment section. Overall, the Bitcoin extremists do not represent me. The Bitcoin maximalists, I get it. That's totally cool, guys. I love Bitcoin. I love crypto. Crypto is for everyone, everywhere, regardless of what you think. And the marketplace of ideas that we have going on right now in the crypto economy is amazing. So much innovation is happening. It is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, you'll let me know your thoughts on Bitcoin maximalism and Bitcoin extremism and crypto tribalism overall down below.
in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching the video. You guys are super awesome. I love you all. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up on it. And of course, you can subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. Hit that notification bell to know when I put out a new video. Long live the blockchain, and peace out till next time.